Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. It is late. I usually don't do this, but when James Corbett wants to sign in from Japan, we have to take care of the time zones, etc. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. James Corbett from Japan is here. Brother, how are you, man? Well, I'm coping. Anyway, I'm sorry to put you out late at night, but uh, as you can imagine, I hope people who've been following my channel know I've just put out a gate series that I was working on 24-7 for the past month. It's been absolutely insane. I produced a two-hour feature-length documentary with the help of my great video editor, and I hope people will watch it because I put an awful lot of effort into it. But uh, here we are now, finally, at the other end of it, so we can discuss all the craziness that's happened since the last time we spoke. It's amazing. We were just saying this before we went live. And as far as the uh, Bill Gates video series, every one of us have shared it every which way from Sunday. So you're getting some serious views on it. There's still, it seems like they're still slowing them down on you, but people are definitely seeing it spot on as usual. I mean, unbelievably, the information that you've pulled out is what's making the mainstream put information like this out. I just want to show you this. A subscriber just sent me this from a uh, Veterans Administration nursing home that she worked at, and this is how nervous they are. They're sending information like this out to people. Limit, limit your time researching things about COVID-19 and just stick with things like CNN and MSN. Don't go looking all over the internet. Relax. Take care of yourself. Stop the what if train. Do you know how many of these I've gotten from people that work at hospitals, that work at government agencies? They're actively sending out brochures saying, don't listen to those crazy kooks on the internet with all their links and proof and, you know, reams of information showing that Bill Gates is, is indeed Mr. Burns come to life. It's amazing, man. It really is uh, not surprising, unfortunately. And in a way, I almost agree with that uh, with that idea, just from the completely other perspective. Uh, my my way of putting that would be to say, I hope people aren't dwelling on every single minute of the news cycle and what's what's popping in the news this particular minute about this COVID crisis. What I tried to do with the Gate series, and I think is important, is to get the bigger perspective on what this agenda is really about. Because yes, there's a lot of stuff going on in the news, and yes, please do try to keep up with it, but we have to keep the bigger agenda in mind so we know what's coming next, and we can refuse to get on that train when it comes to our station. I think I've got the, uh, I pulled up the Corbett Report this morning because I do that every morning. Not just your YouTube channel, but it's the CorbettReport.com. Links will be in the description, obviously. And it looks like after, it looks like you're done with the Gates series for now. I mean, you did three solid, solid uh, segments on it. And then you did a couple of other pieces here and there showing what was well, up. Four, like, four parts. The documentary is four parts. Four? Okay. I want to... I want to stress for people out there, the link to spread is CorbettReport.com slash Gates, G-A-T-E-S. And that has all four parts of the documentary, uh, video, audio downloads, links to BitChute and other places other than YouTube, and a complete hyperlink transcript of absolutely everything that's said in the entire series. Okay, I think this is it right here. Is that it? Uh, yeah, well, that's the, the latest part. If you go to CorbettReport.com slash Gates, you'll find the full documentary. Okay, okay. All right. Well, at any rate, it looks like you're turning your sights to something else that once again, Bill Gates is involved in because he's just everywhere in here. He's omnipresent in this whole situation. The food shortage. And we're still seeing that. That's still mm -hmm. a thing, which is amazing. And people, I don't, I don't, I mean, I can't tell. Everyone seems to be going along with this. Like this is a real thing. Even the numbers they're putting out, 5 million people have been infected and half of those people recovered, and 5 million out of 8 billion is zero, I mean, it's point zero zero. I mean, th this is insanity, but it looks like they're going after the food specifically. Is that, is that fair to say? I think it is. Uh, there's definitely, a, uh, a, and there's so many different agendas at work. One of them is the switchover of the food supply from real authentic organic food into bioprocessed laboratory nonsense, chemical gunk. That uh, And that that has been a process, obviously, it's been going on for a, a number of years now with the GMOs and everything else, but that's really been intensified in the last five years or so with a lot of research and a lot of investment into specifically lab-processed synthetic meat, which, of course, 
you know, everyone knows about the Impossible Burger and things like that right now beyond meat and all of that. Uh, that is uh, also, as you say, there are Gates ties to that. Gates has investments in that. And lo and behold, it's starting to take off in the wake of this COVID crisis because, as you know, I'm sure all of the meat packing industry is in a tizzy about, oh, well, we've had all of these workers test positive, although a lot of them are asymptomatic. And what does the test even mean anyway? But anyway, they've tested positive. So now there's a big disruption to the entire food supply and the, the food chain. It is uh, very worrying because, of course, we know where this is going. Tens of millions of people freshly unemployed lining up for food banks and oh lo and behold there's massive disruption in the food industry i mean soylent green is looking more and more like a documentary than uh than uh, science fiction there's a lot of things that are looking like a documentary as opposed to science fiction right now and we touched on this back in february we were talking about the super bowl a little bit etc and this was just picking up steam but we just couldn't see it for like surely people will look at this through sensible lenses and understand that this is a push. They did this. They did. The, I don't know if you have this over in Japan, but all over the United States, because since I saw you last, I've been across the country three times. I stayed out of Massachusetts the entire time. I finally came home all across the country. There are, well, there's nobody on the highways, which I've never seen in my 50 years of living, James. I, I mean, it, it's unbelievable. All across the country, there are billboards that are, you know, the the mantra, we're all in this together. And and the average person looks at that like, that's a it's a that's not a it's that that reminds me of Schmedley Butler. We're all in this together. That's basically them stating it. The corporations are all in this together. They shut everything down. The smaller companies, the television watchers see that. Surely it's a thing. But there's no disease, there's no pandemic, there's no outbreak. It's 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 amazing that this is happening. Yeah, it's so, like if we had the they live glasses and we put them on, it would yeah. go from we're we're all in this together to you're all in this together, as in right. we have you where we want you. And I think that's the underlying message of this uh, propaganda right now. What did you think about? Uh, well, how about this? How about this? I, I, I pulled this up. I was fast and furious on this. I have never I've had 53 videos taken down off of YouTube. One, two, three, just non stop. I'm not as smart about my word placement as other people. Do you see what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But it's funny watching uh, Anthony Fauci up there next to Donald Trump telling everybody they need to stay in the house for their own safety. And then we're reading this. I mean, we're reading this back when it was new, where he's literally in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is not a national newspaper. It's the New England Journal of Medicine. It's legit. And he's saying it has a 0.01% death rate, which according to the numbers they're showing us now is fairly accurate. And yet- Yeah, that's, that's it. The, the debunkers, over. the fact checkers are going to say, oh yeah, well, they were saying that at the early stages where they didn't know and he was just guessing and it looked like it. But yeah, now that more information has come out, yeah, it looks somewhere in that range of 0.1%. <sighs> How is is this just I mean, you've you've been on Bilderberg, you've been on the cutting edge of this forever. I've been around YouTube for a long time, but you were here way first. Everyone, James Corbett, I mean, just might as well. Everyone respects your work. You're very careful with what you do. You don't do anything sensational. You show all the facts, period. How did they pull this all together? Have an event 201 in October and then have the audacity to launch it and it worked. Yeah, it, that's it, the crazy part, isn't it? I mean, it to have the audacity work. to hold the simulation at the exact time that supposedly what they're simulating is just starting to take place and then assuming no one will put these pieces together. It is almost like they're putting it in your face in a way that, uh, hey, look what we can do. And those who have eyes to see and ears to, ears to hear will see and hear what we're doing. And everyone else will call you crazy because we'll tell them to call you crazy. Um, it's almost like a demonstration of power, like an abuser would use in an abusive relationship. Abuse right. someone and then tell them, look, this is the power I hold over you. What are you going to do about it? Because that's the that's the point. This, the, m as usual in America, more weapons went off those shelves, more bullets went off the shelves. But on my other social media, I pay attention to these guys. I'm ex-military. I watch these guys. Everyone fell for it. You're... The America, the, the gun behind every blade of grass that was once quoted by a Japanese uh, general or it's now it's a patriot behind every roll of toilet paper. 
they're never going to see it coming because they haven't seen yeah. it coming and it's not going away. And then you've yeah. got Dershowitz coming out saying oh, that yeah. completely yeah. and totally constitutional to drag you to the hospital and drag well, you to the he, meeting. Here's the point. He's he's not wrong. The Supreme Court has ruled in that case in the past. It, it, it That doesn't mean that he's morally right. It just means legally, I'm sure they will. And they will argue this. This is what they are going to say. So I think people need to understand this is coming. And the only thing that is going to derail this agenda, which we know is coming, they're telling us it is coming. The only thing that will derail the agenda is mass non-compliance. If enough people not just say no, but hell no, this is the line in the sand. I will not allow this to happen. Then it will not happen. But until that point, uh, if enough people go along with it, it's going to happen and they're going to justify it whatever way they justify it with whatever legal trickery they want to pull out of the bag. Do not fall for it. And I know most of your audience probably won't fall for it, but we have to get this information and awareness out to others to connect the pieces. One thing I want to caution against, though, is in this particular crisis in particular, do not trust what you're seeing on social media. Trust what you can see in reality. And unfortunately, a lot of people I know in the States are seeing a lot of people wearing masks and, and you know, practice your social distancing. So there is that social proof of it. But there's also something to the fact, you know, the huge lineups for people buying guns and things. A lot of people are not happy with what's going on right now. And don't trust the bots because there are bot teams that are deployed on social media to to create echo chambers of everyone's going along with it. You're so crazy. So don't don't trust what you can't see with your own eyes. Yeah, I, I, it's funny you say that about the bots because on my other laptop, I have I have uh, nearly half of Twitter accounts discussing coronavirus are likely bots, researchers say. And they're talking about mil 200 million tweets are likely bots, according to the mainstream. So that's kind of a hint. But I'll tell you what, like I said, before we went live, I mentioned that I live across from the ocean and it's Memorial Day. This is a huge holiday. Well, first of all, they're using geoengineering very strategically right now because I don't know how it is where you're at, but we don't, I mean, I can see Logan Airport from where I am. You might remember Logan Airport because one of the 9-11 hijackers took an airplane from there, the story tells us. There's no planes coming in or out. Nobody's flying. How, do you, how can you social distance and wear a mask and do all these other little different things? And yet, Somebody's still spraying directly in front of the sun. It's It's been 50 degrees. It's almost summertime. The beach is completely closed. People are walking on the beach, a couple here and there. Everyone's wearing a mask. There's still curfews in effect, which just blows me. Curfews are what you do when you take when you spread democracy in Iraq. First thing you want to do is help them out with don't go out at night. They're doing it here. And people, it, it, I'm not seeing the numbers of people waking up here. I'm, I'm, I'm just online. That's one thing. But you don't know who your followers are necessarily. You know, you don't know who's going to do what. But what I'm seeing in real life, these people are buying it still. And we still haven't seen people dying and dropping in the streets. So I, I, I don't know. I don't I don't have a whole heck of a lot of hope, James. This was yeah. well played. It's um, it's some dark times and they're probably going to get a whole lot darker before they get better. Um, and the the thing that we have to do is spread the awareness of this to as many people as we can, because I, as I point out at the end of the Gates documentary, I hope people understand and take away that the point of this is not to say Bill Gates is the source of all evil. And if we got rid of Bill Gates, then everything would be OK. No, 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 no. This is an ideology. It's an agenda. It's an entire institutional framework of inst organizations and people that have come together over this agenda of controlling the human population in every sense of that word, not just the numbers of people, but also what they do, how they interact, how they purchase things, their biometric identification, it, uh, their contact tracing. It will all be tied into a total 100% surveillance grid that's already coming into place. That is the end goal of this. So we have to be not just against Bill Gates and what he's doing, but against the entire agenda and the ideology behind this. And unless enough people see that for what it is and resist that, do not comply in every sense, in every way you can, put your foot down and say no to this agenda. Unless we do that, it's, it's not going to work. I totally agree. And and there's a lot of us that are trying. And sadly, and I don't understand what the deal is, several large channels that have come up in the last 10 years, just like yourself and other major players, they've kind of taken a backseat, like a kind of a wait and see attitude. And I do not understand that. 
everything we've ever spoken about is coming to a culmination all at one time. They want to do the mandatory vaccines. They want to do the contact tracing. They want to institute Agenda 21. They want you to eat and make believe meat. You know what I mean? And then yeah. all the while, just like you were talking, don't point your finger directly at Bill Gates. He's 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 the he's the face they're presenting. But this is the first thing that happened. Bill Gates was targeted by social media. Yeah. They yeah. own the mainstream and they own the platforms that we're on for the most part. So it's very, very well played. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And of course, this is always where it's going to go. Of course, the person who's the identifiable front man for an agenda will then be, oh, he's being targeted. Oh, poor Bill Gates. He's just trying to help the world. So of course, that's the way they're going to take it, which is why an important part of the messaging that I think we have to get out there is, look, here's Bill Gates and all the things he's connected to. But more important is the things he's connected to. What is he funding? What are these things? Why? Where does this come from? Why are we stumbling into this? So it's not about Bill Gates per se. But um, it's extremely, yeah, it's extremely well played, I suppose, in a lot of ways by the would-be controllers because so many people are stumbling into this. Um, and as I say, it's it's absolute nightmare. And you're right about that. There's, I mean, it's interesting to see. I don't think I'm completely surprised, but it's interesting to see that a lot of the people in the independent media space are going along with this or at least holding back on it or or trying to talk as if you know the 2020 selection cycle is still it's the most important difference. thing in the news it's insanity but um I, I don't believe in litmus tests like oh i won't listen to this person unless they believe this kind of thing right but right this is the kind of thing where it's a line in the sand like if you do not see this is everything that i have i've been warning about for the past 12 years it's all coming together in this one package that's being delivered right now if you don't see that then either you're too stupid to know what's going on or you're willfully lying. Well, here's another thing. I wanted your opinion on while you were here. I don't know if you covered this in your videos and I've watched every one of your videos numerous times and I've shared them all on numerous other platforms just in case. And YouTube took them down off of my channel and didn't take them off your channel, which was awesome. So cool. I'm, I'm, I got no problem with that. I think it's a huge smoke screen that even, you know, Johnson & Johnson, they're going to let go of the baby powder so they don't give kids cancer because they're going to focus on giving cancer through vaccines. I'm almost positive it's still going to be ID2020. I think too many people turn their cameras right at ID2020, so they're just putting up a smoke screen right now. Do you, do you have any opinion on that? I think an ID2020 is an exceptionally important piece of this puzzle, um, but it is also, I mean, there's so many different interlocking institutions and agendas, including you're showing right there some of the sponsors, of course, Accenture, uh, Microsoft, obviously, Rockefeller Foundation, Idioorg, and Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, which was one of the things I pointed out in my documentary. Because again, it's totally not intuitive. Why, why is a vaccine alliance involved in this biometric identity thing? What's going on? But as I point out in the documentary, it fits together like hand in glove. They're going to vaccinate everyone and get them on the biometric ID grid at the same time, perhaps even uh, ultimately, although this is one of those things that the debunkers, the fact checkers will say, well, they're not going, there's no such thing as a coronavirus vaccine that has some sort of embedded microchip, blah, blah, blah. Ah. Well, even if that's not the case, they, they have, as I showed, Gates has sponsored and in fact instituted the research research for the quantum dot die tattoos that they're going to embed in the in vaccines in the future. If not this round, at least it will be in the future. That'll be tied into the biometric ID grid, which will be tied into the cashless payment grid. Everything that you buy, everywhere that you go, everyone that you talk to, tracked, surveilled, databased at all times, tied to your identity, to your digital slave device that everyone's carrying around in their pockets at all times. Total ultimate dystopia nightmare 100 times worse than George Orwell or anyone else could have ever imagined is happening. And as you say, most people are going along with it. It, it just blows me away how many different genres of quote unquote conspiracy theories that are all happening at once. It's from, it's just, they're absolutely, this is Normandy. They're just overwhelming us with numbers and numbers. And meanwhile, everything stays shut down. And they're just going to, it's just going to be a war of attrition. I'll just go get the vaccine. I don't care if it's got a contact tracing element in it. It's no big deal. I don't know how it is in Japan or overseas, but in the United States, every single day, I'm getting another series of emails from Ohio, Nebraska, South Dakota, where they're hiring contact tracing armies, which should freak people out. Even the terminology or the way they're naming it should scare people, but that's what they're calling it. This is insanity because... It's been months. It's this this all started at the end of the year. It's almost we're almost halfway through 2020. 
I've still yet to actually meet anybody that's been killed with COVID or whatever, whatever. I mean, and, and, and on the, on the other side of that, we just keep getting information that, oh yeah, another country turns out 74% of all the people they claimed were COVID deaths were actually something else, but they made a mistake. What can be done? And I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a thing that just keeps happening over and over. And I love the fact that you pointed out the, the uh, chain gains, mass graves in New York city. Well, there's no context to that. And they don't mention the fact that they shortened the time to claim a body by 50%. That's big. You know what I mean? But the mainstream just ran with it. No problem. And people bought it. And that's the last thing they'll remember unless they happen to have seen your video. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wait, there's always mass graves in New York. Oh, that's weird. Oh, yeah. Unclaimed bodies. 30 days going down to 14 days in the middle of this pandemic. Hmm, I wonder if that has something to do with the surge in people being buried. there. Yeah. Again, as you say, just eliminate all context and then report it in, you know, tabloid headlines. Oh, my God, mass graves in the USA because of this. Or, or New York Times, of course, printing, you know, all those dead uh, people's names on the front page. Wow, wow. It's, it's, you know, incredible. Imagine if they did that every flu season, which they right. easily could do. But no, they don't do it for flu. They do it for COVID-19. And that's the other thing. I have a doctor that's been coming on with me weekly, Dr. Andrew Kaufman. Um, he's a medical doctor, and he lost his job for speaking out on YouTube. It is what it is. Uh, son of a bitch, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Well, he... He introduced a lot of in different information I didn't realize. Like, I had always thought, I was always into the impression, and I might have said this in the last time we had an uh, interview together. They're going to talk about this, and if it doesn't go, they'll just spray a, a small section of the United States and kill everybody. Well, it turns out it doesn't work like that. You'd actually have to inject it. And it turns out a bunch of doctors came out, and the, the, the water is getting so muddy. You've got people thinking the cues behind this. You've got people thinking that, it's a plan by Donald Trump. You got people thinking Jeffrey Ep Epstein somehow going to figure this all out. And it's like, let's just look at this horrible thing for what it is. It's bad enough on its own. But a lot of people are looking over it, around it, and under it, and they're still doing it yeah. through a mask. And it's scary, James. Well, also, I mean, one way to get a handle on what's happening and what's going to happen is to listen to what they are telling you. Because, hey, they told you with Event 201 what was going to happen, and it happened. And I think the next thing that they are telling you is going to happen is the second wave. That narrative has been embedded. There's going to be a second wave in the fall or in the winter, and it's going to kill way more people than the first wave. And then we'll all have egg on our face, all the people who doubted this, right? And you'll be the ones responsible for it. And I'm sure that's going to happen. One way or another, they're going to make that happen. And that could be total statistical fakery, as they're doing now, or it, they could release some sort of real bioweapon of some sort or something along those lines. Well, that, again, they will make it happen one way or another in order to dis discredit everything that we're talking about. It was those damn freedom people that made this happen. Yep. yep. Like people that actually question this narrative at all. There's a dozen different ways that they can kill a mass amount of people and no one would ever see it and they could just report it. And that's yep. enough for America because without, with just a scary story, Everybody self-imposed, locked themselves in the house and did what they, James, we have no economy and people, that's not even the number one, that's not even the number one concern because Wall Street's doing what Wall Street does. The Fed's doing what the Fed does. They're pumping money. Everything still looks okay. Trump's sending out autograph checks here and there. So that's kind of cool. And everyone's staying in the house. They're weakening the country exponentially. Everyone's sitting in the house, watching mainstream media, hearing all the fear porn. There's no sun. The food's terrible because food's food's getting sick now. It's it's yeah. it's diabolical. Yeah, it's absolutely diabolical, and it works out in so many different ways. I almost wonder if it worked almost too good from the planner's perspective, because wow, everyone's just going along with it. I mean, I'm sure they would have expected it would have taken a few different waves, you know, getting people conditioned into it. No, everyone's going along with it happily. But as you say, it's because at this point. So far, yeah, a lot of people have lost jobs, but it's still we're still in that period where it feels like this is just a vacation from reality or something. It's not until six months down the road or a year down the road when it really starts to hit home, the new normal, and you know, you're never going to live your life the same way and things are going to start getting worse and worse economically speaking. When that pain really starts to hit home is when they have to lower the hammer in some way or other and uh, not looking forward to that. Yeah, and they will. They will. The the funny thing, like I said, traveling across country while this was happening, there was nobody around. There was 
trucks on the road, military trucks on the road, but there was nobody driving, no one going anywhere, no planes in the skies. But the only essential work that was going on in pretty much every small town, hamlet, city was 5G. 5G was being put up like little kids doing something when their parents weren't home. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that yeah. is really, really disconcerting. But I, I got to kind of stick with one burning, one, you know, one bad thing at a time. Mm. This whole COVID, I mean, I can't believe this is still going on. Yeah. And oh, and wow. as you say, I mean, it's the perfect cover for so many different things. I mean, those are just the things we can identify. But can you imagine what else is going on while one third of the human population has been locked up in their homes? I mean, just whatever craziness they can get away with, they will get away with. And of course, time it all for this this time, this window of opportunity. And uh, it's not just 5G. There was something else that came to mind, even as you were saying that. Um, but yeah, again, everyone being cooped up in their home, they can get away with all sorts of different agendas behind the scenes right now. I, I do think it took, I do, I'm positive of it actually, that they were expecting a massive amount. I mean, out of the entire country, a percentage or a half percent, which would be about a million people. If, if my math is right, it could be completely wrong. A million people pushed back. They had the military rolling absolutely everywhere. And then they just kind of parked and started going to Walmart and showing people like, uh, hey, this is how you just decontaminate something all the while they're not wearing any contamination gear, et cetera. And I found this story really comical because I'm sure it's already gone across your desk, but it's funny because I'm going to show you one side of it and then show you two days later. Everyone's out of work. Everyone's getting a free check from the government, but American billionaires got $434 billion richer during the pandemic. Well, that's odd, isn't it? I mean, that's that's kind of strange. Facebook, Jeff Bezos, you know, Walmart, et cetera, et cetera. And then apparently one of the guys, one of the billionaires that owns the mainstream saw that and said, oh, no, no, that's not accurate. Pull that story down right away because we don't want these people sitting home with their mask on finding out we made all that money. I just find it strange. It comes out. That's funny. I, I, I saw that original headline. I didn't see that follow up, but that seems about right. And of course, Market Watch, you know, where else would they publish that? You bet. You bet. Mm -hmm. At 929 a.m. Just to throw a little numerology in there. But this is absolutely insane. Did you ever in a million years think they would have the balls to pull this off? Right after they have a five top a five hour tabletop event that complete it's it's identical. What they yeah. showed at their at their event 201 and what they're doing. They just yeah. overwhelmed the media. They scared people with words and it worked. Oh, but no, if you go to the fact checker websites, they'll say it is not identical. You see, they were talking about a globally spreading coronavirus pandemic that started in Brazil and that killed 60 million. Whereas oh. this globally spreading coronavirus pandemic started in China and hasn't killed 60. And it's just nonsense, the kind of garbage that fa passes for fact checking these days. But that's part of the, the trick that they've been using to get enough people to go along with this agenda. And here's what it ultimately comes down to. People are looking for excuses to confirm or disconfirm what they what they already believe to be true. So if someone already believes, oh, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist, I'm not going to listen to anything you say. Anything you say, they'll just check it on one of those fact-checking websites. It will say debunked, and that will be good enough for them uh, because people have outsourced their, their intellectual labor, unfortunately. Um, but here we are, and this is the results of this. This is the fruits of this. Well, this is totally, totally crazy. Um, I had one other thing. This this just reminds me of the the first time. This isn't the first time corporations have com uh, maniacal wealthy men, the elites, have tried doing this. I pulled up Smedley Butler earlier, and I know you've covered him over the years a couple of times because that's where I found out about it. But this is just the same thing. They just went about it a different way, and that's when I see. I just tried to pull it up, but it won't it won't come up. The we're all in this together. People are using it as a mantra. And that's just basically them. Once again, they're telling you, we're all in this together. You can't beat us. A lot of people have put together great videos where Ford and Tesla and Coca-Cola and we're all here together. Even though we're apart, you're sitting at your house. It's all good. This is an amazing bit of MK Ultra on steroids. And like you said, they are basically telling you it is us. It is what we're doing. And what are you going to do about it? You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. And and it's interesting, yeah, to tie this back to someone like Butler. For people who don't know, Major General Smedley Butler, one of the most de- decorated Marines in the history of the U.S. Marine Corps, who uh, fought in many different wars uh, throughout the uh, early 20th century, uh, issued a sort of mea culpa in the 1930s, where he started going around giving a speech, war is a racket, and saying, you know, basically, I was I was just fighting for the the, the corporations and their, the, you know, the paymasters, the bankers, the, this, this was not for U.S. security interests or anything like that. Um, and it, you're right, because one of the first things that I wrote after this agenda really kicked into high gear a couple of months ago is this is what World War III looks like, because it is my take that this is a war. It's a war on us. It's a war on the population, the free people of the world. And that's all around the world. Any free people anywhere are going to have to be squashed out in order for this corona world order to come into existence. And that, I think, is the the end goal of this one way or another. And uh, they're going to try to feed, they're going to give you the boogeyman. Oh, it's it's China. And now please hate China. Here's your new two minutes of hate. Uh, you know, Russia was so yesterday. Now we have to all hate China. And they'll, they'll gin up a new Cold War that's as phony as the last Cold War. And uh, that's where they're, they're going to try to direct that rage that we're all feeling right now. Whereas in reality, no, it's really the, the oligarchs, the, the ruling class that are waging this war on all of us at the same time. We are at war right now, whether we know it or not. Yeah, they're all in this together. If I remember your, the synopsis of your documentary on Schmedley Butler, when he went before the president and the Senate, who you're supposed to, these guys tried to hire him as a, a, a decorated general to take on the America and take it over, he went and said, he went and told on them and yeah. they did nothing because they were afraid that these wealthy men would crash the economy. Yeah, he was leading uh, the bonus army, which was oh, a bunch serious. of World War I veterans that were trying to get their, their pay from the US government, who, surprise, surprise, even back at that time, was treating the veterans like crap. Um, so he was leading the bonus army, marching on Washington, trying to get this. Yeah, he was approached as someone with, you know, here's a guy with military credentials and he, he's got a lot of support from the military. So he was approached in the 1930s uh, to basically do a fascist coup of the U.S. government. We're going to take it over. We're going to start running it. And you can be the front face of this. Uh, he, instead of going along with it, blew the whistle on it. It's called the business plot. It was researched and then put in the congressional archives. They, they did a whole committee hearing on it. You can hear his testimony about it, but then quietly swept under the rug, never talked of again. Um, but yes, I mean, that was what they were doing in the 1930s. Do you think they haven't actually accomplished that by this point? I think it's quite evident by what's going on today that they have. Every time I see those billboards, we're all in this together. All I'm seeing is them saying, "We're like, you can't beat us. We're all in this together. And it's true. They literally shut down the world. Like, they shut down the world. Last time we spoke, it hadn't gotten this bad. And we didn't no. really think it was going. Like, it didn't make any sense that it could. Surely people would yeah. detect this. Amount. I think the thing that surprised me about this is that they did go all the way with it uh, because I've I've been here since 2007 doing the website. I, I went through the swine flu hoax at that time. I went through a, Ebola hoax. I went through the Zika hoax. So I've seen so many of these that I thought this was going to be another one of those. But uh, obviously they pulled the trigger on it. And you're right. We're all in this together. All of us are doing this to all of you. And that's that is exactly the message that they're trying to send people. And unfortunately, it's worked beautifully so far. And the, and the other thing, even the people that are halfway, well, the vaccine's not bad, but I'll get it anyway. I think once you get that, you're committed. You are you just done did yourself. Yeah, it's that, a- yeah, that was the other thing that I wanted to bring up when you were talking earlier. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, cool. now that people have been locked down basically to a large extent voluntarily, I mean, it's not like massive amounts of people are, are protesting, foaming at the mouth, being thrown in jail. No, they're doing that a little bit, but most people are doing this of their own accord. Once you've bought into that and you've bought into that agenda and it starts to extend, then at a certain point, it is your identity. You've already invested your identity in this, this crisis. And I believe in this and I'm, do, you know, it's the right thing to stay home. So once it gets to the point where it is genuinely painful, where people start running out of money and start starving to death, they're already going to be so far invested in this that it's the sunk cost fallacy. Well, I can't question it now. I haven't questioned it to this point. That would mean I was wrong. Oh, I can't be wrong. So it, that's one of the most insidious parts of the psychological game that's being played right now. I was I had a, a, a young fellow named Days of Nowhere on the other day, and he's a very philosophical fellow. You, you'd like to speak, speaking with him, actually. And we drew the same conclusion. People have been locked down because it amazed me when this first happened. 
I don't know if you noticed this or not, because I know you were deep in your research because you banged out that gate series nicely. At the beginning, they weren't censoring us. It was no holds barred. You could say whatever you want. And in my opinion, they're, they're doing something they had never done before at all. So they needed to see what we thought of it and what our subscribers thought of it. And after they got all the information they needed, they realized, wow, no one's doing anything. So they started pulling videos. I had never, I mean, James, every single day, one, two, three, four, your video's been pulled, your video's been pulled. No consequences necessarily, but your videos have been pulled. So... Yeah, that's an interesting point because I definitely noticed that from the kickoff of this crisis. For the past few years, I've noticed the the sort of filters being put in place. So it's harder and harder to find my material. Everyone I've talked to in the independent media said basically my subscribers were capped on YouTube for months, years, whatever it was. I uh, said that I, last you know, time. Yep. And then, then there was like a flip. The switch was flipped uh, around February and suddenly... Uh, uh, suddenly I'm getting new subscribers again. Suddenly I'm getting my video. My videos are getting recommended to other people. They hadn't been recommended for over a year at this point. So th there was definitely some filters lifted. And I, I've always been thinking it's because they want this conspiracy, you know, realism to spread so that they can then blame the second wave on this, right. it was this misinformation that made you know, that killed your grandma. But actually you raise an important point. Yeah. Maybe the planners want to see, what it is we're thinking and how people will react to it. And hey, yeah, okay, they're talking about it, but they're not doing much. All right, okay, so good. Much. Thanks for the info. That absolutely could be part of this. And what you said about people being voluntarily locked in for the most part, like I said, since the last time I saw you, I've been on four wheels, coast to coast to coast to coast. It's not convenient, but it was no, it wasn't a big problem. But if you locked in, you locked in. You know what I mean? Plus, there's nowhere to go. You can't go get a sandwich. You can't go to eat. You can't get a haircut in the United States of America, James. Imagine that. Well, it's thankfully, done. that doesn't apply so much to me. But yeah, no, I get the point. <laughs> um, knew, that was not my point. But <laughs> <laughs> also, but also, I should point out that um, people often talk. They're, they're all talking about Sweden. Sweden didn't lock down. Sweden didn't lock down. Actually, that's not necessarily so true as as I think that's been a bit overblown that Sweden does have some rules in place and a lot of people have been following them voluntarily anyway, um, which is why Sweden has been set up as, oh, this is the model for the, no the, the non-lockdown and look, there's people dying in Sweden, therefore you need to lock down. Um, actually, uh, maybe, I don't know, I haven't looked at every country or whatever, but maybe Japan would be the example of a country that, that hasn't locked down and that hasn't suffered you know, this wave of death that we're being told is uh, going on everywhere else. Um, as I did predict, I predicted this uh, when I did my first How Is Japan Reacting video. I said, uh, there, you know, there's absolutely, there's no big outbreak here and they're not making a big deal about this because the T Tokyo 2020 Olympics, they were still planning on having them right up through February, right into March. Channel. You said that on my channel. And then, like, right, and I said, as soon as they cancel the Olympics, what do you know, there's going to be an outbreak. And it was literally the same day. They cancel the Olympics or postpone them or whatever. And and the, the same day, the Tokyo governor comes out and says, there's a hot spot in Tokyo. We might have to lock down if you guys don't behave. So that that did start. But it turns out that the, uh, the post-war constitution here in Japan, written, of course, by the U.S. and the occupiers, but uh, that not only made this officially a pacifist country. Tokyo, uh, Japan does officially not have an army. They just have a self-defense force, which happens to be the sixth largest military on the planet. But anyway, <laughs> it's a self-defense force, guys. But uh, the, part of that constitution is also makes it legally impossible for the government to order businesses to close or order people to stay home. They cannot, they don't have the legal authority to do, th do so. And even weirder, they're actually abiding by that. They're actually saying, well, we can't, our hands are tied. We can't do that. So they have, uh, for example, in Tokyo, they asked businesses to close down and people to stay home, but they couldn't enforce it in any way. And uh, out where I am, way, way, way away from Tokyo, it, there's there's no big outbreak and there's no big shutdown. The only thing is the schools were, were shut down for a couple months. But other than that, uh, life goes on completely as normal here. And look at this, uh, you know, people aren't dying left, right, and center over here. So that might be an interesting thing to explore. I'll have a video up about that on my channel next week after I, I'm taking a week off just to do interviews and things rather than to do video reports. Cause I didn't uh, mean to bother you so often. And, no, 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 no. I'm, I want people to, I, I definitely want to get back in touch with the people who've been asking me to come on for the past month. And I've been saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, no. but also I want 
definitely to direct people to corporatereport.com slash gates. If they haven't seen it yet, even if you have, please spread that to others. I, I really think this is the important big picture that we need to be focusing on right now. I will definitely do that. I've been doing that anyway, so that's no problem. But I'll put the specific one, Corbett Report backslash Gates. And your, uh, what do you what do you think your time frame on the uh, the collapse of the food chain supply? Are you going to do a, a series on that as well, or? Well, I'll definitely be following it. I uh, I don't have a time frame on that. I don't know what sort of how that's going to play out, and it will be different in different countries obviously. So it'll be interesting. I'll obviously be keeping my eye on Japan because that will affect me and my family. Um, there haven't been stories of, you know, uh, big disruptions in the J Japanese food industry or, or packing industry or anything of that yet. But uh, I know that Japan has, because its diet has changed so drastically in the past couple of generations, it, it used to be a fairly self-supporting country in terms of eating mostly fish and rice and vegetables grown in, here in Japan. Unfortunately, now more, more people have adopted uh, foreign diets and fast food and garbage. Wow. And so that means a lot of the food is coming in from for, foreign countries. Who knows? There might be a, a, a bright spot here. The disruption of the global food supply might make people realize, oh, maybe we shouldn't uh, be transporting you know, beef halfway around the world. Maybe we should be relying on actual local organic real food. But unfortunately, as as I already said, as you know, there are there, instead of that, they're going to be pushing. No, what we need is more lab grown chemical gunk. That will be the solution to this. It's amazing, too, because I was putting up videos for the last four or five years talking about this lab grown meat. And they kept floating the idea of it's lab grown human meat, which is really good for you. And it was just like, this is ridiculous. I will never see this in my lifetime. Well, I can't believe everything's happening at one time. And I don't I don't know if I can't believe everything's happening at one time or the fact that everyone else is buying it. No problem. Like it makes in a pandemic. Wouldn't you see a pandemic? Because we haven't seen a pandemic anywhere. And it's been months now. We're going up. We're coming up on a happy year since they first cracked this bottle open. The genie's been out, but we're not seeing the results of it, man. It's freaking me out. Well, I think there is something happening in New York. I think something did happen in Italy. I don't know what that something is, but I think there have been things that have happened, but mostly in most parts, I, I mean, locking down the entire country of the United States because of what's happening in New York is, even if it was a pandemic or at least a, a disease or infectious disease, even if that was all true, that in and of itself makes no sense. It is ridiculous nonsense that someone out in some, you know, rural Wisconsin has to be locked up in their home because of what's happening in New York is just stupid. But um, yeah, I, I honestly, I, I cast my mind back to just a couple months ago, low those short weeks ago, that feels like 18 lifetimes ago. Right. Uh, and my mindset at that time is that I've always had this sense actually that the, the planners, the would be controllers of society, all they have to do is just go slowly enough and most people will go along with it. It might take a generation. It might take two but you will get there to that new world order goal that they've had in mind. It just takes a bit of time to just, just a little bit at a time, but they're going all in all at once, which is going to wake a lot of people up. I have seen that. I have had more people getting in touch with me and more subscribers and more, just more interaction with people in the past month than I have in the past year. I mean, it's just crazy. It's accelerating, but uh, I think part of that is that they've they've made that calculation. Okay, can we do this? And yeah, it'll wake up a lot of people, but can we just get this done? And I think they've probably made the calculation that, yep, it'll work. So let's do it. Well, last time, last time I had you on, that's what we were talking about. We were talking about, you know, certainly this COVID thing or what I don't even know if it was called COVID at the time in February, because we did it on the Super Bowl. We were talking about Zika and the bird flu and this and that and the Every time they brought out one of these ridiculous pandemics, somebody sat there with a calculator and a pen, and then they checked, and then they checked. And apparently when they came out with measles and everybody laughed and put up Brady Bunch memes, that was their green flag. Because after measles, COVID showed up and it worked. And I mean, James, this is the most long-lasting effect I've ever seen from something that never actually happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Granted, granted, maybe there were econ economic hits in Italy or in New York, et cetera, but it isn't what they're telling us whatsoever at all. And it certainly isn't a pandemic and all the social distancing, all the lockdown, all it hasn't done one iota to the average everyday influenza. No, 
You, you and of course, it wasn't, it wasn't even supposed to. If people can remember, again, just a couple months ago, it was all about flatten the curve, which doesn't mean actually reduce any infection or reduce any death. That wasn't even what they were telling you. They were saying, no, we're just going to spread those infections and deaths out over a greater series of months. It wasn't even meant to save a single life. Everyone who's going to die of this is going to die anyway. That was the official story anyway. Uh, but that seems to have been forgotten. And now there are people who are basically just saying we should be locked down until there's no no more disease or something, some nonsense like that. Uh, it, again, it doesn't even have to make sense. As and long as people are going along with it, they will continue to push. That's breaking my heart because I'm an American. I'm actually kind of what you would consider the quintessential American for the most part. If shit gets ugly, I'm in it. That's all there is to it. I've been like that my whole life. That's not what's happening whatsoever. And no one's even irate at this point. Like, how am I going to pay my rent? Like, what about my kid's school? Like, they took the kids out of school. No one's going to work. Everyone's on unemployment and nobody's angry unless everyone's hidden in their house, beating their wives and no one's showing up to arrest them or whatever. And the other thing is everywhere you go, there's big signs. Thank you for keeping us safe and keeping us fed and keeping us healthy. And they're making, you know, they're doing what they did with the soldiers. And I was in the military, but still they made soldiers like professional football players. They were stars. Not that they're not heroes, Etc. But I. But when you've got 22 veterans killing themselves every day, there's something wrong with the military. Really, 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 really bad. They're doing the same thing with the the nurses and the doctors are heroes, and yet they're firing them at an alarming rate, and the hospitals are empty. Yep, this is one of the first things that I said about this whole crisis. I said it in an early newsletter, and I also said it in a video called uh, the Totally Spontaneous Balcony Applause Phenomenon or something like that, oh, where I pointed okay. out yep. they are making doctors in and nurses into the new soldiers of this, you know, this next 9-11. And I, I said at the time, just the way they treat soldiers is just dispensable products for the meat grinder, just thrust them in there. And once they're done, who cares? You know, let them rot. That's exactly the, word, the way they're going to use the doctors and nurses in this crisis. Don't, uh, you know, don't go along with the agenda because you think, oh, well, I get to be the, the, the new hero. Oh, great. It'll be so great. No, you see what they do with their heroes. Heroes. They're just dispensable products for the system. And once you're done, once your usefulness is done, they will throw you into that meat grinder and never think about you again. So keep that in mind. It's crazy, man. It really honestly is. And I don't see any end in sight. But the thing is, I don't know if you've tried working on a second wave video specifically, but nobody's beaten. They're not allowing it to stay up. Everyone that's done a video pointing out the fact that they keep saying second wave, hmm. just like you said, you should take hmm. their word for it because they're telling you because at some point it seems like they'd have to reinforce this because they're going to go for more than just mandatory vaccines is straight up fodder for conspiracy theory. that's ridiculous they would never do well now they're never not going to do that that's just how it is the first thing that they tried to do was get rid of the dollar the first thing 5g 2020 and beyond was the there's a pandemic the united states is under a state of a disaster it's never happened in the history of the country so the first order of business is 5g 2020 and beyond the second order was the digital dollar and it failed but it'll be right back yeah, exactly right. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's the point I make in the final part of my Gates series, or uh, maybe in the third part as well. A cashless society is definitely part of this agenda. Um, that is definitely coming. And uh, yeah, exactly right. Well, I unfortunately, I'm going to have to get going. But uh, yeah, no, worries, I, no worries, James. I hope people understand the seriousness of this. That's all I can say. And once, I mean, I know a lot of people do, and in, in your audience and my audience do understand the seriousness. And people are looking for, well, what can I do about it? I really, truly believe that getting other people aware of this is now more important than it's ever been. I've always said that it's important to get people aware of this information. It's never been more important now because unless people see this agenda for what it is, they will not say no to it. And that is your greatest power that you still have. You still have the ability to say no and mean it. And you know, consequences be what they may be. I, who knows? It's going to work itself out one way or another. But your responsibility right now is still to get people aware and to say no. Draw your line in the sand S and, and, and do this mentally as well. And ask other people to do this mentally. Draw your line in the sand now. What is the thing that you will say, hell no, and I will go to jail or I will start a fight or I will do whatever it takes in order to say no to this. Draw that line in the sand now. I will not do X. I will not do Y. I'll not do Z. Z, sorry. Uh, and, and draw that line now so that when it comes, 
you'll already know, you'll already see that so that you don't play any mental games with yourself. And I think that's going to be an important part of this because we're all going to be tested. It's going to be so easy to go this path. Yeah. It's going to be so hard to go the other path. But we've already seen, I'm, I'm not going to keep this short, but the way they're going to force everybody to go, there's not going to be any unringing that bell. So you're going to have to pick, draw a line in the sand. At any rate, Richie from Boston. It is late here on the East Coast. James from Japan. James Corbett from the Corbett Report. He's famous. You know him. All the links will be pinned in the comment sections. And if anybody can think of a way to take this to the street without necessarily starting a riot, send them. James, I appreciate your time, man. Go live your life. Right, While you still you. can. I am out. Right. Thanks, brother.